All right, let's do the elbow and the radial ulnar joints. So this is chapter six. So this is Rhonda Rousey and her famous crossbar or arm bar. All right, so basically, I mean, the elbow is one of the most painful joints around. And when she gets you in this position, you're, you're pretty much done. Uh, very painful. Um, anyone that does Taekwondo, Krav Maga, Jiu Jitsu, you know that, uh, a lot of the techniques lie around, uh, submission, um, stretching the elbow or putting the elbow at end range. So if you look at the elbow and the radial ulnar joints, the most upper extremity movements involve the elbow and the radial ulnar joints. So usually grouped together, uh, to, their close real anatomical relationship the elbow joint movements may be clearly distinguished from those of the radial ulnar joints okay because elbow joint does flexion extension but the radial ulnar will mostly do pronation and supination so the radial ulnar joint movements may be distinguished from those of the wrist because the wrist is going to do flexion extension radial deviation ulnar deviation so let's look at the bones now the ulna is much larger approximately than in the radius than the radius the radius is much larger distally than the ulna so if you look at this uh, diagram here that's the ulna that's the radius the scapula and the humerus serve as proximal attachments for muscles that flex and extend the elbow the ulna and radius serve as distal attachments for the same muscles so the scapula humerus and ulna serve as proximal attachments for muscles that pronate and supinate the radial ulnar joints and the distal attachments of the radial ulnar joint muscles are located on the radius so basically there's a lot of muscle attachments on the radius the ulna and the humerus so we need to take a look at these and make sure that we're studying the right material here so don't get confused there's a lot of terminology here radial ulnar radio humeral humeral ulnar uh, but just take they're usually named for the bones that they're referencing so radial ulnar is talking about the radius and the ulna humeral radial or radial humeral is the radius and the humerus so if you look at the bony landmarks here here's the medial condylar ridge here's the humerus now the ulnar nerve comes right posterior to the medial supracondylar ridge and the epicondyle so that's why when you hit your elbow and you say oh i hit my funny bone well that's the humerus that's the funny bone but it's really the nerve that you're hitting and the ulnar nerve here's the coronoid fossa here's the trochlea Here's the radial tuberosity. Here's the coronoid process. Here's the ulna. Here's the trochlear notch. Here's the olecranon process. So basically, this is your elbow right here. If you're going to hit somebody, you would hit somebody with your olecranon process. Okay. Now, the key bony landmarks for the wrist and hand muscles, you have the medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle, lateral supracondylar ridge, now, when you think of a tennis elbow or lateral epicondylitis, it's all the muscles that originate from the lateral epicondyle right here, and you get little micro tears right in there. Now, the elbow is a glinglimus or hinge type joint. It allows only flexion and extension to occur. The interrelated joints, again, humeral ulnar, that's the humerus and the ulna, and then you have radial humeral, which is the radius and the humerus. Uh, elbow motions primarily involve movement between the articular surfaces of the humerus and ulna, specifically the humeral trochlear fitting into the ulnar trochlear notch. The radial head has a relatively small amount of contact with the capitulum of the humerus. So really the radial head relies on the annular ligament to hold it in place. And uh, parents are kind of notorious for dislocating their child's uh, radius because they'll what they'll do is they'll they'll be walking and they see a puddle and they'll try to pick up their child with one hand and they'll dislocate it because the especially under uh, kids under the age of five, um, what happens is that the annular ligament isn't strong enough to hold the head of the radius in and it'll pop right out. As the elbow reaches full extension, the lecranon process is received by the lecranon fossa and becomes a much more stable joint. So after about 20 degrees of elbow flexion is when you get a little bit of laxity. But full elbow extension, you have a pretty solid joint there. So that's why when you saw the, the arm bar for Ronda Rousey, she's at completely end range. There's nowhere else for that to go. So you got bone on bone and you're getting a lot of nerves, a lot of tension, and it hurts like heck. 
joints increase joint stability when fully extended, like I mentioned. With the elbow in full flexion, the coronoid process fits into the coronoid fossa. As the elbow flexes 20 degrees or more, its bony stability is unlocked, allowing for more side-to-side -side laxity. Oof, look at that. So elbow dislocations are very, very painful. I mean, just look at the poor grimace on this guy's face uh, with lifting. I mean, he drops the weight and it's just dislocated right here. You see that in a lot of power lifters. They'll dislocate their shoulder, dislocate their elbow. Just too much torque. I mean, really, I mean, he's lifting hundreds and hundreds of pounds. There's there's really no reason to, uh, except for to win a gold medal, I guess. But uh, really, look at the consequence. He won't be lifting for a very long time. Um, the joints in general, stability and flexion is more dependent on the lateral or radial collateral ligament and the medial or ulnar collateral ligament. So really the elbow really relies on the ligaments to hold it in place. The ulnar collateral ligament is critical in providing medial support to prevent the elbow from abducting when stressed during physical activity. Many contact sports and throwing activities place stress on the medial aspects of the joint, resulting in injury. So the most commonly injured ligament, and this is on the quiz, is the ulnar collateral ligament. Uh, particularly crucial to high-velocity sporting activities such as baseball pitching that require optimal medial elbow stability. Uh, compromise of this structure often requires surgery. And the surgery that is the most common is called the Tommy John procedure. That's where the ulnar collateral ligament is the surgical reconstruction using a tendon graft, such as the palmaris longus tendon. The radial collateral ligament provides lateral stability and is rarely injured. So the most commonly injured ligament is the UCL, which is the ulnar collateral ligament. Uh, the annular ligament provides a sling effect around the radial head for the stability. So if you look at this annular ligament, like that's what I was mentioning, kids under the age of five, really, they don't have a strong annular ligament. So what it does is it has a tendency to dislocate just like that. Now, so if you look at this uh, Tommy John surgery, but look at the torque that's put on this elbow. I mean, you're, you're, you're thinking, well, no wonder uh, uh, that ligament is injured. And that's the common scar that you'll see from... Uh, Tommy John surgery. Some of those, they'll get a tattoo around it. It'll get a little spider web or anything like that. So you've seen that or stitches that are common in uh, baseball. They'll get a tattoo like that once they have that. But here's how they fix it. So a surgeon removes the torn ligament. So they'll remove the UCL. Drills tunnels in the two bones. Boom, boom. So here's the humerus. Here's the ulna. Threads a tendon taken from the patient's forearm or leg through the tunnels. Uh, if they don't have a palmaris longus, they can use uh, uh, one of the fibularis or uh, depending on which tendon they want to use. So then secures the ends together right here. So the elbow moves from zero degrees of extension to 145 to 150 degrees of flexion. So zero to 150 degrees, extension 150 degrees to zero. Hyperextension, so meaning your elbow goes past neutral. Uh, um, Usually it's very rare, but if you overstretch your ligaments, uh, that can occur. Uh, the position is not present in all persons, but it can. you can have a, almost 5 to 15 degrees of hyperextension. So hyperextension would be going past neutral here, right here. Um, now the carrying angle is very important, especially in females. Uh, if you know, if you remember the pelvis, uh, the pelvis in general is wider in females. But the carrying angle, it comes out like this, right? So it can be anywhere from, men usually have it from 5 degrees, but women can have it as far as 15 to 25 degrees. And the reason that this is important is, let's say they're trying to lift, let's uh, let's take the uh, bicep curl with a straight bar. What happens is when you use a straight bar, your elbow is going to have to flare a little bit, and it's going to put a lot of torque on the UCL and the, the inside of the elbow here. So you'll see that females will uh, complain of elbow pain when they do straight arm bicep curls. Well, how do you how do you resolve that? Well, do the easy bar curl, right? So do uh, do the where it's shaped like this, so that it takes the carrying angle into consideration. If you do this then you're putting a lot of torque on the elbow just if you have a wide carrying angle. So for uh, 
women, the easy bar curl is much better than a straight bar. Even for men, if your carrying angle is uh, wider and if you get elbow pain with straight bar, and then make sure that you're using uh, easy bar curl. And then you remember from EMG standpoints, it's a lot safer and you actually uh, recruit more uh, uh, muscle fibers when you do the easy curl anyway. So you might as well do it that way. The joint itself, the radial ulnar joint, is a trochoid or a pivot type joint. The radial head rotates around at the proximal ulna. The distal radius rotates around the distal ulna. The annular ligament maintains the radial joint or the radial head in its joint. Okay, so this is the ulna. So if you look at this, again, this is the ulna. Here's the radius. This is a syndesmosis, which is an interosseous membrane. Uh, a lot of times with severe compound fractures or fractures, you can tear the interosseous membrane. Uh, again, you have an ulnar notch that's on the radius, and you have a radial notch that's on the ulna. So again, uh, approximately, you, uh, the ulna is larger, and then distally, the radius is larger. The radial ulnar joint, which is the radius of the ulna, they supinate. 80 to 90 degrees from neutral. So the way I remember supinate is sup, sup man. So palms up and pronate as palms down, 70 to 90 degrees. So pronation a normal is zero to 80 or 90 degrees. Supination is zero to 90 degrees. Total form motion is 160 degrees. Okay, so you're going from 80 one direction to 80 on the other direction. Persons have uh, may vary in range of supination and pronation. Some may reach the 90 degree arc and others may only have 70 degrees. So it depends. Um, called syndosmosis because the joint between the shafts of the radius and the ulna are held tightly together between the proximal and distal articulations. Uh, substantial rotary motion between the bones. Synergy among the glenohumeral elbow and radial ulnar joints. As the radial ulnar joint goes through its range of motion, the glenohumeral and elbow muscles contract to stabilize or assist in the effectiveness of the movement of the radial ulnar joints. Example, when tightening a screw with a screwdriver that involves radial ulnar supination, you'll tend to externally rotate and flex the glenohumeral and elbow joints. Try it. Next time that you're, uh, you're tightening a screw, you'll notice that your elbow and your glenohumeral joint uh, 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 will flex and you'll externally rotate. That's just a better leverage. And when you try to unscrew it, your elbow will extend and you'll pronate and internally rotate. It's just a, it's a common pattern. Um, conversely, when loosening a tight screw with pronation, we tend to internally rotate and extend the elbow and the glenohumeral joints. So those are good biomechanics uh, uh, questions that you might see on the quiz. We depend on both the agonist and antagonist in the surrounding joints to provide an appropriate amount of stabilization and assistance with the required task. So here's the movement, that's elbow flexion, movement of the forearm to the shoulder. Here's elbow extension, movement of the forearm away from the shoulder by straightening the elbow to increase its angle. Here's pronation, internal rotary movements of the radius on the ulna that results in the hand moving from a palm up to a palm down. So that's pronation. Supination, like I said, sup. So you're moving from palm down to palm up. So I'm giving you a, a high five there. Oops. Now, what are the muscles that flex your elbow? You have the biceps brachii. Remember, you have two heads of the biceps. You have the brachialis right here and then you have the brachioradialis. So how do you work the biceps? You do concentration curls, easy curls. How do you do the brachialis or target that? You would do elbow flexion with a pronated grip. And how do you target the brachioradialis? Those are hammer curls. And then of course, the triceps, you would do the cable rope extensions, uh, skull crushers, uh, um, elbow extensions, push-ups to get the triceps and conius. Again, looking at the muscles, here is the deltoid, here's the pectoralis major, here's the biceps. You see the brachialis is between the biceps and the triceps. So to get a nice uh, definition or a, a delineation between your biceps and your triceps, try to do uh, 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 elbow flexion with pronated grip and you'll develop that brachialis because that's a true elbow uh, flexor. 
Here's the brachioradialis. Here's your anconius that will help uh, develop uh, into elbow extension there. Okay, so this is the front. Here's your biceps. The long head is lateral. Short head is here. Inserts on the radial tuberosity right here. Okay. Here's the radial ulnar pronators. So the pronator teres, pronator quadratus, brachioradialis. The radial ulnar supinators are the biceps brachii supinator. So if you see that the biceps does supination, don't forget to add that little twist at the end when you're doing concentration curls or dumbbell curls because you get that little extra squeeze and you'll get the nice rounded look for the biceps. So tennis elbow is a common problem usually involving the extensor digitorum muscles group near its origin. I showed you that lateral epicondyle known as the lateral epicondylitis or depending upon specific pathology may be termed lateral epicondylgia or lateral epicondylosis. Losis is chronic litis. Okay, so this is when it's become chronic and chronic is more than uh, uh, four to six weeks. So if somebody comes in a clinic and they say, oh, I was playing tennis yesterday, then that makes sense, lateral epicondylitis. But if they said, oh, I've had tennis elbow for uh, three months, then it's no longer itis, it's more losis. And they'll benefit, when it's losis, they'll benefit more from eccentric exercise and cross friction massage, where if it's itis, it's more, they'd benefit from gentle stretching, ultrasound, rest, electrical stim, so acute versus chronic phase of rehab associated with gripping and lifting activities. Now medial epicondylitis is the opposite. Uh, this would be golfer's elbow, uh, somewhat less common and is known as golfer's elbow, associated with medial wrist flexor and the pronator group near their origin on the medial epicondyle. Both conditions involve muscles that cross the elbow but act primarily on the wrist and hand. So here are all the muscles um, that primarily do flexion and pronation, biceps brachii, brachialis, brachioradialis, pronator teres, pronator quadratus. Here's the posterior group that does primarily extension and supination. That's the triceps brachii and conius, and the supinator will do a little bit of extension. All elbow and radial ulnar joint muscles are innervated from the median musculocutaneous and radial nerves of the brachial plexus. So it's very common to injure the brachial plexus, um, but the, knowing what muscle does what, so if you damage the radial nerve, that will come from C5, C6, C7, C8, and what muscles will be affected? Triceps brachii, brachioradialis, supinator, PIN nerve, and conius, and provides sensation to the posterior lateral arm, forearm, and hand. Now if you have damage to the median nerve, which is uh, common in the carpal tunnel, originates from C6 and C7, pronator teres, pronator quadratus, or anterior interosseous nerve, provides sensation to the palmar aspect of the hand and the first three phalanges, the palmar aspect of the radial side of the fourth finger, and the dorsal aspect of the index and long fingers. Now when you think of biceps, you think muscle, so the musculocutaneous nerve uh, branches from the C5 and C6. That's biceps brachii and brachialis. So here's biceps brachii muscle, flexion of the elbow, the supination of the forearm, weak flexion of shoulder joint, weak abduction of shoulder joint when externally rotated. So what are the best biceps exercise based on EMG? Well, you would do a concentration curl with supination. So for that's the short head. Uh, you want to grip the closer to the lateral side of the weight. It seems to uh, recruit more muscle fibers. If you want to do the long head, you would do incline dumbbell curls. Uh, uh, now this, uh, sorry for the typo, but if you want the brachialis, then you would do a pronated grip. And if you want hammer curls and get the brachioradialis, you would get uh, 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 more of a neutral grip. Okay, so... Now the brachialis muscle, this is right, this is a true flexion of the elbow. That's why you want to do elbow uh, flexion with a pronated grip and you'll get brachialis and that will provide that nice separation between the biceps and the triceps. Brachioradialis muscle, uh, flexion of the elbow, 
pronation from supinated uh, position to neutral, supinated from pronated position to neutral. So basically, the brachioradialis maintains your forearm in a neutral state. Not too much pronation, not too much supination. That's why hammer curls, if you know, that's a neutral grip, uh, uh, and that's what you would do to emphasize that. The triceps, uh, um, there's three heads, so they all the heads extend the elbow. The long head, extension of the shoulder joint, adduction, and horizontal abduction. Now, so the best tricep exercises is a close grip bench press, uh, overhead cable extensions, such as a long head, uh, straight bar or V-bar, lateral head. Uh, they've, they've checked the underhand grip, pronated grip, or supinated grip, but it doesn't seem to make a difference as far as the triceps is concerned. Uh, um, and then triangle push-ups or diamond push-ups get the medial head. So depending on what look you're looking for, you can do these, and this is all based on uh, EMG studies. Then Conius does extension of the elbow, pronator teres, pronation of the forearm, weak flexion of the elbow, pronator quadratus does pronation of the forearm, supinator does supination of the forearm, now all the muscles that do elbow flexion, uh, biceps curl, uh, your agonists are your biceps brachii, brachialis, and brachioradialis. Elbow extension are your triceps brachii and your anconius, but anconius is a weak elbow extender. Radial ulnar pronation, your agonists are pronator teres, pronator quadratus, and brachioradialis. Radial ulnar supination, like tightening a screw, uh, that's your biceps brachii, supinator muscle, and brachioradialis. There you go. Okay, so make sure you know the muscles. You make sure you know which are the agonists for each one. And basically, that's the elbow joint. And make sure you know the best exercises and how to target each one. All right, very good.